Hello everybody. So I have something rather special in store for you today. A couple of weeks ago, I went on BestBuy.com and I purchased the absolute worst pre-bill I could find on the site. A refurbished one for that matter. It's an HP CompactQ desktop. And wait till you see the specs in this thing. I still can't decide what's more ridiculous. The fact that Best Buy thought it was a good idea to refurbish such a system or the fact that they decided to include Windows 10 Pro. What makes it more ironic is that if there's anyone buying this absolute dinosaur of a PC, I can guarantee that person is not a pro. Now guys, if it's not bad enough that Best Buy decided to include Windows 10 Pro in a system that would have been very common in say 2010, there's the fact that they actually charge $20 less for this system, which includes Windows 10 Pro, than they do for Windows 10 Pro by itself. Now you're probably thinking, well, yeah, it includes Windows 10 Pro, which is ridiculous, but surely the Windows 10 Pro license is non-transferable, and you can't just use it on whichever system you want like you can if you buy the copy from Best Buy. But you'd be wrong in thinking that. There's a sticker right here with the product code, and it can be used on any system and redeemed just the same as if you buy the disc copy from Best Buy themselves. So while I came into this video thinking I'd never recommend this system to anyone under any circumstances, I just realized now that if you're gonna buy Windows 10 Pro from Best Buy anyways, buy this thing instead. Even if you're just gonna use it as a paperweight, you'll save 20 bucks. So let's talk about what's inside this machine. Now you're probably thinking, it's only 140 bucks. Even if it has really, really low end specs, it's still gonna be good price to performance, right? <laughs> well, that is a totally reasonable assumption, and I wish I could say it had a good price to performance. The CPU inside of this crap box can be found on eBay now for a dollar. That's right, a dollar. The G620 inside this machine was originally released nine years ago, which makes me wonder what exactly Best Buy was thinking when they decided to refurbish this machine. A $1 CPU and an $140 system. Oh, and this thing definitely does not have a graphics card which means that the most expensive component in this machine is likely the 500 gigabyte hard drive. That's right, hard drive, not SSD. I suppose the one thing this system has going for it is that it has at least four gigabytes of RAM. A lot of the compact queues only have two gigabytes. So four gigabytes is not terrible, considering especially when the system was originally released. As far as other positives go, and there obviously aren't very many, it is rather compact, as the name Compact Q would suggest. Although if that's a big selling point for you, I should probably also warn you that it is extremely heavy, especially given its small size. Oh, and I suppose Best Buy was kind enough to include these lovely peripherals that look like you got them at the 99 cents store. This keyboard is light as a feather, and so is the mouse, and both of these feel like they're made out of the cheapest Chinese plastic on planet Earth. Oh, and I'm actually very concerned about this keyboard. You see, it came with a very strong chemical odor. The odor is so pungent, in fact, that I was very surprised when I looked around the keyboard and I couldn't find a sticker anywhere warning me that the state of California knows this product to cause cancer and birth defects. I can't help but wish that Best Buy hadn't included this keyboard, although it was a nice gesture, I suppose. Now that you guys have seen more or less what's inside of this Neanderthal of a system, we're going to see what kind of gaming performance, if any, I can squeeze out of this PC. Remember, it does have Intel graphics. The four games I'm going to be testing are Assassin's Creed 2, Half-Life 2, 
Team Fortress 2, a lot of twos in there, and Crisis. What is definitely going to be holding this PC back mostly is the fact that it has integrated graphics. Its CPU did come out at least a few years after most of these games, so that should not really be the problem. But how far will integrated graphics be able to take us? That's what you're about to find out. First up, Team Fortress 2. In Team Fortress 2 at 1080p with low settings, the crap box averaged a measly 33 FPS with a 1% low of 5 and 0.1% low of 4. Luckily those lows are not that significant, as the game runs with very minimal stutters. That being said, 33 FPS is not even close to enough to really be able to compete with other players in an online multiplayer shooter like this. If it was a single player game, you could argue it's playable, but for Team Fortress 2, it absolutely isn't. The only good thing I can say is that there were no stutters, just extremely low FPS. The FPS was also highly variable, because the CPU could handle the game without any issue. This game does say the minimum spec is a single core CPU, but the integrated graphics is no match even for Team Fortress 2. Next up, Assassin's Creed 2. In Assassin's Creed 2, I had to turn the resolution down to 768 by 1024 just to get the game even moderately close to playable. Although playable is not exactly the word that I would use to describe the crap box's performance in this game. Even at the lowest settings, at this extremely low resolution, the crap box averaged 19 FPS with a 1% low of 8 and the 0.1% low of 2. Now this game was very stuttery. Most of the time you're hovering around 20 FPS, but every now and then there's a massive stutter that just freezes up the game for a second. Between that and the fact that the game looks terrible at this resolution, I would by no means call this playable. So this really just goes to show how abysmal the performance of the crap box is. I mean, we're testing titles that came out a few years before the chip inside the crap box did, and still it struggles to get 30 FPS at subpar resolutions with the lowest settings. You might be thinking, yeah, because it has integrated graphics, it makes sense. But at the same time, a modern chip with integrated graphics, say the 3400G, can still handle getting somewhat respectable frame rates on modern eSport titles. You just can't say the same thing about the crap box, even back in its day. In Half-Life 2, the crap box was able to somewhat handle gaming at 1080p, with mostly low settings of course. The crap box averaged a somewhat respectable 56 FPS, with a 1% low of 26 and a 0.1% low of 10. This is the game where the FPS was the most variable. Whenever I entered an area that resulted in the GPU being given a significant workload with more objects to generate, the FPS would plummet down into the 30s. But in areas that were not GPU intensive at all, the crap box somehow managed up to 100 FPS at times. This game I would call playable even at 1080p, although I would not recommend turning up the settings at all. Now it's time I answer the question you've all been waiting for. Can it run Crisis? Your first instinct might be, no, of course it can't run Crisis. How is the crap box going to run one of the most demanding games of its time? Ah, but that's of its time. Crisis did come out in 2007, which was actually two years before the crap box's CPU came out. Of course, the crap box does have an integrated GPU, and Crisis was notoriously demanding for its time, as we all know. So, I'm not particularly optimistic, but let's see if we can achieve playable frame rates, turning down the resolution and the texture quality as needed. In Crisis, the crap box required me to turn the resolution down to 600 by 800, with all settings set to the lowest possible. Still, with this abysmal resolution and lowest settings, the crap box only averaged 27 FPS, with 16 FPS being the 1% low and 3 FPS being the 0.1% low. There were no stutters and the gameplay was somewhat surprisingly smooth, 
although it was just a mess of pixels. It seemed somewhat playable until I got to a part with action where the FPS would tank, going from around 30 FPS to around 15 FPS, and at that point it was almost impossible to hit enemies, both because of the extremely low frame rate and also the fact that enemies in the distance just look like a mess of pixels. So no, the crap box cannot run Crisis. Now that you guys have seen how this abomination of a machine performs in 2020, especially when bogged down with Windows 10, please do not buy this PC. I implore you. Unless, of course, you're doing it just for Windows 10 Pro, in which case, go right ahead. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like on your way out, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.